YouTube, what's going on? It's your boy Rob, aka DJ Bill. Thank you for stopping by my channel, SOS Fragrance Reviews. It has been a long minute since I've done a video review. All right, so we're right in the beginning of fall. Fall officially goes from the 21st of September through like December 22nd. I live in the Midwest. Um, fall is not my favorite season of the year. I'm going to keep it 100% with you guys because to me, it's just a reminder that the hawk is coming. But I know a lot of people really enjoy fall. Uh, I love the fragrances, and that's what this is about. So I've got some great fragrances that I'm going to suggest for you guys to take you into fall. And, um, you know, because fall is one of those, you know, in the Midwest, it's a time where, like, the very beginning of fall, the weather is pleasant. I mean, you'll be in the, you know, 70s, sometimes upper 60s decent weather, nice visual as far as the leaves and the colors of the leaves changing. I mean, that's always pleasant. But once you get beyond like October 20th, it's like that. The hawk is coming. It's always in the low 50s, overcast, gloomy, stuff like that. So um, hopefully I've got some fragrances that kind of fit both sides of that coin. So let's get into it. The longer I've been into fragrance, the more I've realized that I don't need to get 100 ml bottles every time I make a purchase. So I've started really starting to buy the smaller bottles because it can save money and I can't use all of this juice in a lifetime. First fragrance up is a 30 ml. It's from the house of Zerjoff from their Casamirati line. This is 1888. This is a really beautiful fragrance in my opinion. Um, in layman's terms, really simple. It kind of smells like root beer, wax, and florals in the opening. I know it sounds simple, but that's kind of what I get in, in regards to the wax. It's not like a uh, iris waxy type lipstick vibe. It's more just like straight wax. Imagine a candle. You drop a candle, you pick it up, you get some of the you know parts of the candle on your fingertips and you smell it. It's really got that type of you know feel to it. Uh, and then what happens is it begins to transition and like the, the most dominant note, which is the root beer, the wax and the florals, they flip and then the florals become more dominant. The wax is still kind of like in the middle and the root beer becomes kind of faint. It sits like that for a little while, then it eventually transitions into like this uh, kind of like soapy vibe and then goes into at the very end, it's kind of slightly sparkly vanilla. It's really nice. This is a really well done fragrance and I think a lot of people would like it. It's classy. Um, it's multi-purpose. This could definitely be a signature scent in my opinion. And it's one that I really plan on rocking a lot this fall. So from the house of Zerjoff, 1888 from the Casamirati line. Here's one from an independent house. Brother doing his thing. The house is Savoir Faire. And the fragrance is called Bon Noir. This is one that I'm really enjoying. Um, this fragrance has got this really nice chocolatey patchouli accord in it. Plus it's also got some musk. It lists food is, a, is an ingredient also. Uh, it's got some cinnamon, it's got eucalyptus. It's a really masculine, mysterious type fragrance that when it dries down is this really warm, comforting type fragrance that I think a lot of men that like masculine fragrances would actually enjoy. Plus it's from an indie house, plus it's from my brother doing his thing. So if you, Get your opportunity to get your nose on it, man. I suggest you try this one out. You might like it. This is Bon Noir from Savoir Faire. Here's one from another house. This is an offshoot of Dewar Fragrances. This is Encounter Scents, and this is Seduction for Men. Um, this is like a date night scent, in my opinion. It's got a really nice, like, lemony opening. It's got some sweetness from Tonka. It's got pink pepper, um, cardamom. This is a nice fragrance. It kind of has that Lana Wheat Delone vibe, sort of, but not really. It, it's just kind of got that sexiness to it, more so than like a smell that is like another fragrance. It's kind of just got that feel to it. So um, this is one that, you know, I think a lot of people would enjoy if they checked it out. If you're looking for like a seductive type, sexy date night fragrance, this is something you might want to, you know, consider. It's more on the, for designer, it's kind of on the, well, it's not a designer, so let me, let me correct that. It's not a designer, it's an indie. It's at about $84.99 is the price point, so it's something that's 
I think it's affordable and it's quality. It lasts long. Um, I think a lot of folks will like it. It's an X straight de parfum concentration. It's 100 mil. So, you know, I think I'm starting to see reviews on the different fragrances they've got from this house online. So, you know, if you're inclined, check it out. Seduction for him and Counter Sense. You guys know that I really love vintage fragrances. I've got two that I want to recommend. Um, not saying that you, you need to go get these fragrances, but if you are a collector and you don't have them, do your research. If you can get a sample some, some way, somehow, try to get a sample. Uh, first one is the uh, infamous Gucci Envy. Um, this one is discontinued, but it can still be located. If you are diligent and seeking this fragrance out, eventually you will run across this one at a you know reasonable price that makes sense and if you're inclined pick it up um, this is just a you know nice ginger incense cardamom just sexy fragrance that performs well and it's got a very appealing smell that i think a lot of people like so if you can check this one or if you can cop this one cop it gucci envy okay second fragrance is from the house of chanel i just recently added this back into my collection this is my third bottle Chanel Ego East, all right? I know this fragrance by heart. This is like sandalwood, um, rosewood, cinnamon. Um, this is just a really, really nice fragrance. It's got carnation, it's got rose. The, the, the mixture of the, the florals with the carnation and the rose mixed in with the cinnamon and the sandalwood always gave this fragrance a slightly different feel than any other fragrance that you know was out in, back in 90 when it dropped and fragrances that, that have come out after the fact that that floral mixed with the cinnamon and that sandalwood is always it just got a certain elegance to it that i don't really see in a lot of other fragrances and uh it always performed well now this is not a fragrance that garners a lot of compliments but it's still a fragrance that smells classy and I think it's usually well received. I've never had anybody tell me they didn't like the way I smell rocking this fragrance, but I really wouldn't care. I like it, I've always liked it. So, uh, you know, do your research. If this is something that you've been eyeing, you know, try to check it out. You don't have to get a vintage bottle. You can actually pick up, um, you know, a newer formulated bottle of this. I wanna say the price is about between 80 to 90 bucks. I know they sell it at Nordstrom. Um, so there you go, Chanel Eco East. Watching this video, you should kind of notice that I'm doing uh, some of this stuff in twos, and the next two are killer, all right? These are two of the best releases, in my opinion, of the last few years, uh, both designer, okay? First one up is from the house of Cartier, and this is Pasha de Cartier Parfum. This is just a really well done fragrance, in my opinion. It's kind of got a smooth creaminess uh, with some booziness, and a little bit of pine. So it's kind of got like a classic fougere type feel to it, but it's modernized, uh, smoothed out, smells high end, smells expensive. This is one that I think, you know, if you're looking for something like for formal settings, formal occasions, dress up, you want to you want to definitely try this one. This is not going to smell dated. It just smells classy. If you want a classy smelling fragrance, regardless of your age, this is one that I highly recommend, all right? Pasha de Cartier Parfum, and it performs good. So, second one, the one I've been talking about for the last few years, has been on a few of my lists, and this is, this is him from the house of Zadig and Voltaire, all right? This is a really nice sandalwood incense with a little bit of vanilla fragrance. Um, it's kind of got an ambery feel to it, but with the smoothness of the sandalwood, it kind of transitions and it kind of turns into like this dusty feel. Kind of hard to explain. It's got a bad boy feel to it. Great smelling fragrance. It performs well. I love the way this one smells. Uh, if you've never tried this one, check this one out. I don't always say, or I never really say blind by it, but this is a, to me, this is signature scent worthy. And this is, you know, this could be a definite, I, I would feel confident telling people to blind buy it, even though I don't believe in blind buying. If I had to say, if I had to pick a fragrance to blind buy, this would be it. This is him, Zadig and Voltaire. 
Got another two, all right? <laughs> These two, in my opinion, are for the club. These are fragrances you can wear out to the club. You can wear them out to a bar and grill. You can even wear these on a date and it will work just fine, all right? They've kind of got that big booming type feel to them um, and they're well done. So first one up is from fellow reviewer, Red Lessons, and this is Absolutio. This is from his brand, Novitas. I've been kind of like holding back on doing a review on this fragrance. I actually got it when it was first released. I, I you know, I bought it early before it had even come, before he had even started shipping it uh, to any store or anything. I kind of wanted to support a fellow reviewer and I always liked, you know, Red Lessons. Uh, I felt like he was always, uh, he did honest reviews and I, I always felt like I, you know, I felt what he felt in regards to his taste and fragrances that he enjoyed. Um, so this fragrance, I know a lot of people talk about the bottle and you know, all of the other stuff. I'm not going to get into that. I'm going to just get into the juice. And I think that this is a nice fragrance. I don't believe this is a clone. I've heard people make comments about it being a clone of uh, Baccarat Rouge 540. I don't really believe that it's got some similarities, but it's different. I mean, it's no different to me than if you were to say like a Aqua de Gio or uh, Invent In Invictus or a Blue de Chanel or something like that where a fragrance came out that had a certain DNA and people kind of tried to copy that DNA to a certain extent, but maybe did their own version of it. So, you know, this fragrance to me, it's kind of got that almost like burnt sugar accord but then it's got this apple toffee and kind of slightly like cherry-like vibe too. But then it's got something that's different. It's got saffron with those notes. So you've got the, the apple toffee, cherry, kind of burnt sugar, but then you got the saffron mixed in with that, which kind of gives it, in my opinion, like a slightly metallic vibe, uh, but it's not off-putting. And I know when I've worn this fragrance, my daughter always recognizes it and she likes it every time she always says you smell good i really like that one so you know and it performs well my wife has made mention that it's like it's kind of strong to her now that's not really a bad thing because she's just really sensitive to fragrance but it, it always perform, performs well and i can always smell it wafting while i'm out when i wear this fragrance so you know i recommend this one if, especially if you want to support a fellow youtuber um absolutio novitus this is a 3.4 bottle and i want to say it was really expensive when I got it, but I think the prices have come down. I didn't research the current prices. You can check it online, but this is definitely a solid, a solid release in, in quality. I feel like this is a quality fragrance and I'm proud to have it in the collection, okay? All right, from the house of Armani, Armani Code Absolute. Tonka, vanilla, uh, it's got like a suede accord in it. It's also got carrot seed. Uh, which leans more sweet than savory. Really nice fragrance, sparkly opening, performs very well. You won't have any complaints in that, in that department. This is a nice mass appealing fragrance that I feel like people of all ages are gonna like this one. Um, you know, I think the key with this one is knowing how many sprays. You don't wanna go overboard with this one because it is a stronger fragrance, but I think the right balance, maybe two, three sprays max, you're gonna be straight. And I think this is gonna be one that's gonna garner compliments and I don't see a person telling you they don't like the way this smells. So Armani Cole, absolute. If you're looking for a nice designer tobacco fragrance, I've got one for you. Now, when we talk tobacco, I think a lot of people tend to recommend Pure Havan um, as far as designers go. But this one is from a house that I think people may dismiss just because of the house, but as of late, this house has been putting out some pretty solid releases, and I think you would be you would be missing out if you didn't give this one a shot, or at least try to get a small sample and see what you think. This is from the house of Aramis, and this is Tobacco Reserve. Man, this is a really nice tobacco <laughs> fragrance. It's got masculine stylings for sure, but it doesn't smell dated at all. I mean, in a sense, it kind of reminds me of Zaharoff Poor Ohm Signature. Not smell-wise, but in a sense that they took a traditional masculine formula and they made it, you know, modern and they kind of smoothed it out with more appeal to 
2018, 2019, 2020, what have you. You know, this is, I think, a winner. I think it's a stunning designer release and one that I feel like people really need to check out, man. This has got like a, a nice sweetness, um, well-rounded, performs great. I won't get into all the notes. This is just one you need to check out. From the House of Aramis, Tobacco Reserve. If you're looking for a nice designer incense fragrance, I think I have one for you. This is a refined incense fragrance. It's got a really smooth feel to it. Um, smells classy, but only if you like incense should you check this one out. This is from Comme de Garcon. This is Incense Coyoto, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, it's basically like a nice smoky incense with pepper, smoothed out. It's kind of got like a fuzzy, almost like staticky smell to it, believe it or not. I, I don't really know how else to explain it, but it's once it dries down, it, it really smooths out and it's kind of mysterious, kind of dark, but really well done. So if you're in the incense at all, um, this is one you might want to check out. Comme de Garcon, incense, Kyoto, or Kyoto. Forgive me if I just ruined the pronunciation of it. Got a patchouli fragrance for you from a niche house, uh, from the house of Nishane. This is patchouli Koza. This is a fall fragrance, in my opinion, all day long. All right, this is to me well done for patchouli fragrance. Now, this one doesn't swing to like the sweet, chocolatey side. This is more of an earthy type patchouli, but they've kind of paired it with honey and some florals, and it really balances the fragrance out. Um, it's got solid performance and it's a really warm fragrance. It, to me, this really reminds me of, uh, as far as the visual is like being outside in the fall when it's like 65 degrees, nice breeze, and, you know, and you're working in the yard, raking leaves and cleaning the yard up. It's got this really earthy type smell to it that kind of reminds me of that. But, you know, of course you can wear it whenever, but it's just kind of got that perfect feel for fall. So it feels like it's a fall fragrance. So I think, you know, if you are looking for a nice, warm patchouli fragrance, it's got like little hints of honey and florals in it. This might be something you want to check out. This is not a fragrance you blind buy though. This is, you've got to check this one out. Uh, unless you just feel totally comfortable with patchouli type fragrances. This is again from the house of Michonne, Patchouli Cosa. All right, last but not least. I've got a fun fragrance from the house of Dua. It's a blend. This is called Palm Fire, all right? This is a blend, believe it or not, of by Killian's Apple Brandy and uh, Margella, Mason Margella's By the Fireplace. This is a really nice fragrance and it's fun. This is Totally unique. It's got this boozy apple like a core mixed with that smoky campfire feel of by the fireplace. Really well done. Very unique. Um, definitely a fall fragrance. Fall all day long. Uh, you know, it's I know some people are opposed to do and the blends and all that stuff. But I mean, if you're open to that, Check this one out, give it a chance. I think you might really, really like it. And it's a nice blend. I mean, you know, I've, I've never smelled by Killian's apple brandy, but you know, the booziness of this fragrance, I really enjoy. And I know the smoke and campfire feel of by the fireplace. So Palm Fire by Dua Fragrances, really nice release. I think a lot of folks would really enjoy it. Um, that's it. I'm gonna be putting out a lot of videos coming up real soon. I'm gonna kind of get into, again, as I stated before, single fragrances, but also get into like individual like notes like musk, oud, and maybe, you know, like a vetiver or leathers or what have you. So stay tuned. I thank you guys for sticking with me through this time of not putting out any videos. I'm gonna be putting out more content real soon. As always, stay safe, be blessed, peace.